my, my parents listened to a lot of classical music, things like uh, Rossini, Beethoven, you know, Bruckner. So I kind of grew up understanding that classical music sounded like this. Um, at the very moment I heard Turanga Lila, um, it was an amazing shock. It was one of those moments when a, a completely new landscape opens up in front of you, because nothing was like it should have been. Um, first of all, the sound, which is so different from any other kind of music, uh, but also the, the way the music behaves, the, the way the phrases uh, go together, the, the way he builds his forms, which is so different from the kind of German principles we know, uh, it's completely alien to the sort of German Central European idea of, of uh, symphonic development and, and, uh, and the sort of dialectic uh, form, such as, you know, in Beethoven or Brahms. Um, so it's, it's so unique. So I, I never forget the day or the moment when I heard this for the first time. It really is a very... Um, extraordinary mix of all kinds of things. Because on one hand, yes, the, there is the, the love music element and the kind of post uh, Tristan and Isolde kind of feel almost. And, uh, and he writes the sweetest, most tender love music. But then also there's a fair amount of violence in this, in, in this music. And also the parts of it, um, more specifically the Turangalilas. There are three Turangalilas. They are um, based on, on very precise rhythmic patterns uh, that come from Indian music theory. And, uh, and this, these Indian rhythmic patterns actually uh, became very important in, in Messian's work. But, but the three Turagalilas are kind of austere, ritualistic, almost cold uh, in expression. And, um, and very fascinating because they're not obvious in a way. There's the love music and then there, there's this austere music and then there's the third category, um, the third character in this piece, which is the dance. Most, most pronounced in the fifth movement and also in the last movement. And then there's, there's a fourth character which is always present um, in Messian and that is the Zen-like existence. Time stops, the harmony moves very slowly and on top of some kind of a cloud or cushion of harmony little stylized birds move around. Uh, in in Turangalila the birds are played by the piano and some woodwind, woodwind instruments of the flute and the clarinet and the oboe and this is completely unique in Western classical music, this kind of uh, expression uh, because it doesn't go anywhere because we are so uh, conditioned to have the starting point and then the end point and there's this kind of progression from point A to point B and the material keeps changing and it develops and there's this kind of whole uh, uh, mass of things that that happens to the material but in in this in Messian's case it just is it exists and this is so very alien to us this music has such amazingly strong identity. Indeed, you, you hear one note and you, you know, know it's Messia. It's almost like Berlioz. He, he, he has got the same kind of absolute identity in his madness and his, his sort of uh, <laughs> tunnel vision uh, and his idiosyncrasies. You always know it's him. And this is, of course, a sign of a master.